Now, from Wish TV, this is The Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Coming up tonight, the boys' basketball tournament rolls on, and state champions are crowned in gymnastics. In the coach's corner, meet the man who has led Beach Grove to its first-ever boys' basketball regional title. Plus, our Athlete of the Week's huge performance helped lead Cathedral to a regional championship. I'm surrounded by a group of guys that, like, push me to work hard. So, I, I mean, huge credit goes to them. We're all celebrating a new Zone Extra right now. Hi everybody, good evening to you. Welcome to the Zone Extra. I'm Anthony Calhoun. What a great week of high school sports action with a full slate of basketball tournament action and the state finals in gymnastics. In the coach's corner, um, his Hornets are regional champs for the first time in program history. I'm joined tonight by Beach Grove Boys basketball coach Mike Renfro. Plus, he's the big guy who is a big reason Cathedral won a Hoops Regional. A junior Xavier Booker is our Athlete of the Week. And you, you won't want to miss the latest edition of Ask the Commission with Paul Nydig of the IHSAA. And find out how you can be a part of the show. Now let's take a look at this week in high school sports. In Class 4A at Southport, it was a top 10 showdown as fifth ranked Ben Davis took on number eight Cathedral late in the first quarter. Jackson Edwards here hits the runner and the Irish are led by four after a period. Then the, the Giants not backing down though. KJ Winham here with the steal and slam at the other end of the court. It's still a four point game at the break. However, in the third, well, it was all Irish. They outscored Ben Davis 22 to 9 in the period and never looked back. They went on to win 72 to 57 and our regional champs for the first time in nine seasons. It's an accomplishment. Head coach Jason Delaney says this particular team deserves. This team is amazing to be around. They're fun. They work hard. They allow themselves to be coached hard. And it's just, uh, they're just really good kids. And so when you add all that together, it makes this experience so memorable. Even though it took, you know, six years to finally get that first win, no one in this program stopped believing that we could do it. When you believe in what you're doing, as this group has, you know, finally you're going to push through. You keep doing the right things, you keep working hard, and, and it feels like this is what we deserve because we've earned it. Yeah, congratulations, Cathedral. Also in Class 4A, Westfield faced Kokomo Saturday night in Lungersport uh, for a regional title, and this was a good one, folks. Westfield with a strong first half, led by eight at the break. The Cats refused to go away, though, but they still trailed by seven, heading into the final quarter. In the fourth, uh, this jumper from uh, Zavon uh, Ballamy here ties the game with five minutes to go. Then it's uh, Shane Spear coming up here, driving, gets the bucket uh, and the foul there. It's part of a 14 nothing run for Kokomo. They're going to win this one 64 to 60. It's the first regional championship for the Wildcats and since 2011. They get top ranked Chesterton coming up in the semi state. All right, in the Seymour regional championship game, it was Franklin taking on Bloomington North in this one. Early on, the Grizzly Cubs were looking pretty good here. Senior Tristan Coleman helps Franklin coming up here to a five point halftime lead and they led by four heading into the fourth, but in the final quarter, uh, the Cougars offense really gets cooking here. Bloomington North scores 31 points in the fourth and win the regional title 75 to 69. It's the first regional for the Cougars since 2014. Coming up Saturday, uh, they'll look to reach the state finals for the first time since 2000. All right, let's take a look at two semi-state matchups coming your way. Class 4A there, you see the matchup there. Chesterton taking on Kokomo. At Washington, we got Cathedral against Bloomington North. That gets underway at 3 o'clock. All the great action there. These teams know they're just one win away from playing for a state championship. All right, meanwhile, in Class 2A, after winning their semi-final matchups, we had a, a good one in Greenfield as ninth-ranked Eastern Hancock faced off against the University with both teams we're looking to make their program second ever trips uh, to semi state and Easter Hancock came into this one winners of nine straight. Yeah, nine straight university led most of the first quarter here. First half that is and, and took a, a five point advantage in the locker room at halftime. A strong third period uh, capped off by a, a triple 
uh, at the buzzer from Landon O'Neill gives Easter Hancock a, a five point lead in the, heading into the fourth. The Royals put it away in the final quarter here. O'Neill knocks down another three for the last of you know 24 points on the night for him. Easter Hancock moves on to semi state with a 54 to 47 win and they're going to face Providence coming up next in the next round. All right, in girls hoops here, congratulations here to senior Ayana Patterson of Homestead who claimed the coveted Miss Basketball Award. How about that? Uh, Patterson averaged nearly 26 points, 12 rebounds and over two blocks per game this season, leading the Spartans to a 23 and two record and a sectional title. The Yukon, yeah, Yukon commit says the award is something she will treasure forever. That was special. I mean, it's going to be, it was crazy to see that blue and white jersey, him holding that number one. It's, it was crazy. It was special. I mean, just, he means the world to me. And for him to be holding that and smiling and be super proud of me. I just want to be left as a great teammate. And I was a great person for my teammates and show and uh, blaze the path for them to be a great team. And the numbers and the accolades are always going to be great. But if I leave home today, I just want to be remembered as a great person. All oh, the best at UConn. Also in girls basketball, one of the state's top players is heading to Memphis next season. North Central's uh, Tayel Welch, uh, Tanya Welch, excuse me, announced her commitment to the Tigers earlier this month. Welch averaged over 17 points, four rebounds, and three steals per game for the Panthers as senior this season, helping lead uh, NC to second straight section title. Uh, good luck to her next season when she heads off to Memphis. All right, in gymnastics, uh, the season came to a close last Saturday up in Muncie with 50 edition, the 50th edition that is of the IHSA Gymnastics State Finals at Werther Arena there in Muncie. Individually, congratulations to Emily Moore of Columbus North, last year's state champion on the beam, defeated, um, defended her title that is this year. Moore also won the floor and the coveted all around title, helping lead her Bulldogs team to a fifth place finish. Um, Crown Point edged out Homestead and Valparaiso for the 2022 team championship. Congratulations to all the gymnasts and a wonderful season for them. Job well done. All right, time for a break, but we have much more here tonight on the Zone Extra. Glad you're hanging out with us. Up next, it's the coach's corner, folks. His Hornets are one step away from the state finals. Beach Groves boys basketball coach Mike Renfro. He's in the house tonight. Can't wait to talk to coach. Until he had after a monster performance Saturday night, he has the Irish into the semi-state round of the tournament. We're going to introduce you to our athlete of the week from Cathedral. So come on back. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. The Coach's Corner, presented by Junk King. All right, we're back here on the Zone Extra. Anthony Calhoun here with you tonight. Time now for our Coach's Corner. You know, last weekend, for the first time in program history, uh, the Beach Girl Boys Basketball Program won a regional title, but the Hornets aren't done yet as they prepare for semi-state coming up on Saturday. Please welcome to the Zone Extra show tonight, uh, the man in charge of the Beach Girl Boys Basketball Program, head coach Mike Renfro. Here with us, coach. Great seeing you. Good to see you as well. Yeah, hey, thanks so much for joining us here on the, on the Zone Extra. And when I watched the game last week, you guys against Danville, I saw that you guys got the job done. I was like, wow, what, what, what a wonderful opportunity for your basketball program. How, why were you successful last week against Danville? I tell you, the kids have really bought in, uh, playing hard, um, following the plan. You know, early in the season, we struggled a little bit, uh, yeah. just trying to find our niche. But uh, the kids have really bought into kind of what I'm selling and the coaches, coaching staff selling. So uh, right now, they're just rolling. You know, close game last week, and then the fourth quarter, you guys started to pull away. And from last week, take us through that. I know you got a young team, but the fact that you guys were able to find a way to get it done, got to make you feel good. It does, and, and that's the thing is we, get, we have two seniors who've been around for the last four years um, with a whole slew of juniors. And I just tell them, you know, lead by example. Uh, do what we got to do to win. You know, we before me, and, you know, it's the motto and mantra of our program. And, you know, talk about a great atmosphere. Look at some video there of last week. And um, what was the moment like for you guys when you, the buzzer sounded and the game was over and you knew you were going on to semi-state? Uh, total elation. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. we've worked so hard, you know, and this being my fourth year and coaching with Matt English, you know, this has always been our vision, you know, to be the top, uh, top school in Indiana, the top basketball team in Indiana. And, 
a dream now is uh, kind of become a reality in a sort of sort of speak. Yeah, you know, and it, it you know it takes time to build programs. Here you are in your fourth year. Why, why are you at this point? What has been the difference? What got you guys to this point now in your time here at Beach Grove? I just think you know hard work, uh, loyalty to the program. Mm. Uh, the kids really uh, they, they 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 work hard, you know, and it doesn't start. When the season starts, it starts, you know, in April, and then it goes all the way through to where we are now. So, uh, just the hard work and dedication that these boys have shown, and the buying in, the leadership, and, and, and teamwork and working together, I think, you know, makes us who we are. Yeah, you know, look at some of your practice here. I mean, 20 and 6 record on the season. Listen, when you get to that two mark, 20 and 0, uh, when you get 20 wins, you know you've had a successful season. I don't care what level you play, right? <laughs> right. Um, what What are some of the strengths of this of this basketball team? Would you say? Well, I think you know us playing a difficult schedule. You know, is is is. Something I sit down with my athletic director and we do. Uh, mm -hmm. We play a lot of 4A schools. Yeah. A lot of these 3A schools don't do that. So, yeah. and being in Marion County, you got to play some of the big dogs. Yeah. And uh, I think that that helps us towards the end of our season. Uh, you know, we've won nine in a row, 13 of our last 14. Wow. Uh, we went 7-0 in our conference, and it's the first 21 season in Beach Grove history as well. So. I love it. Just yeah. continue to make history after yes, history. It seems like week after week. <laughs> Let's take a look at the matchup coming up for you guys. And um, you look at the 3A semi-state coming up on Saturday at Elkhart. You got the matchup there. And then where you guys are involved, Beach Grove against Sullivan there. Um, it's in Washington. You know it is at the, at the famous uh, high school state gymnasium there as well down there in Washington. Uh, give me give me your take on this matchup coming up against Sullivan. Uh, they're re re really well coached. Uh, they're they're a senior led team. Uh, they play extremely hard. You know they're 25 and two. And it's like I tell the boys, they find ways to win the game. So we're gonna go out and give it our best effort. Uh, yeah. I'm 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 excited with what we got. You know what I mean. Uh, yeah. I got some kids who can play as well. So. If we go out and defend guard, I think we'll be okay. You know, when you look at where you are now here in semi-state, can you sense from the players like, look, uh, you don't you don't want to make too much of a big deal out of it, but mm -hmm. you are just one win away. I mean, as close as you can get right. uh, to to plan for a state championship. You know, I try to tell them to keep everything in perspective. Hmm. You know, at the beginning of the year, uh, we dream, we dream big, and and our goal is to be state champions. Yeah, and that's the goal every year, but. This year is a little bit more emphasis on it, and you know we are we're one way we're one win away to get to where we want to be. Yeah. So, like it is, I tell them day by day and game by game. You know, you've been there four years now. I got to ask you this: what, what do you enjoy most about coaching right now? Uh, the, the kids. I mean, yeah. I, I, I absolutely love the kids. To be able to try to make a difference and an impact on their lives. Uh, I'm a firm believer in, in, in second chances and, hmm. and and just being a role model and a mentor to these guys because I've. I've been led by a lot of good mentors in my life as well. You know, my father being one of them, my mother, uh, they've led me the right way. So I just try to take a little bit of what they taught me in my life and teach it to them boys. Oh, I love it. And tell the folks at home your journey. I mean, you were talking about Coach Jay Wright. Take us through that. I mean, you've been around a lot of basketball folks that have helped you get to where you are. Today. Yeah, you know, I played uh, in Beach Grove. I played basketball in Beach Grove. I went to Hofstra University, Long Island, New York. Jay Wright's first, uh, first stint as the head coach. Uh, we still stay in contact. Brad Stevens and I grew up playing together. That's we're great. the same age, so yeah, good people and good influences on my life. You know, you know the Hornets. You got this the legacy, obviously, the legacy of a "we before me" mentality of that of the late great uh, Matt English. Take us through that and just um, just how important that is to you and, and to the entire team as well. Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's throughout the state. I believe you know the "we before me" mantra, like I spoke upon earlier, and Saturday before the. Uh, the regional, you know, was a quote that uh, he used to talk about was win the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it could, I couldn't get it out of my head, so I just kept speaking upon it to the boys of let's win the day. Yeah. And the, after we got done with the first game, we're not done yet, let's win the day. So big influence on my life for sure, as, yeah. as, as many others. So. Well, look, all the best to you, Coach. Uh, get Thank the you. job done one win away, and we yes, would sir. love to be talking about you guys playing for a state championship at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. I know the kids are looking for that opportunity, but they know yes, they got to take care of business coming up on well, Saturday, right? They do, yes, sir. All right, man. Well, good seeing you as I always. Appreciate it. Thanks all for All the best me. to you guys, and Thank congrats you. again on that regional title. All right, we're going to take a time outside here uh, tonight on the Zone Extra. It's our athlete of the week. Um, he is one of the biggest reasons Cathedral is one step from a first state finals appearance in nine years. Up next, we're going to introduce you to our Athlete of the Week. Oh, the junior, Xavier Booker, is on the way. Plus, we reveal our Play of the Week. Stick around for that as well. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine.
All right, we're back here on the Zone Extra. Anthony Calhoun here with you tonight, as you saw early in the show. Last weekend, Khadija won a boys basketball regional title for the first time, folks, since 2013. And one of the biggest reasons for that is the performance of Xavier Booker. The 6'10 junior had a monster game against Ben Davis, scoring 19 points, grabbing 14 rebounds, and also blocking seven shots as the Irish advanced to within one step of a state finals appearance. Booker is uh, receiving a lot of recruiting entrants from schools throughout the Big Ten and across the country. As for Cathedral this season, as Xavier says, he takes it upon himself to come out strong because the rest of the team often feeds off his energy. I came up with a lot of energy. I mean, the shot was falling for me. I was playing good defense, blocking shots. I was getting rebounds, finishing. So you name it. I mean, I think I did pretty good. As the season's going on, he's getting it. And that's, that's, as a coach, it's, it's really a neat thing to see when, when it starts, all starts to click and you start to see them having success. And when he plays with the fire in him, we're, we're pretty good. I've been getting like a lot more aggressive with playing defense, rebounding around the rim. And I feel like my jumper is starting to get like really consistent now. So that's one thing I worked on throughout the whole season. He stays so humble. And that's a blessing as a coach and as a staff and as, as a team to have someone who, who remains grounded. You know, he's not letting superstardom get to him. He just continues to work and wants to learn and, and wants to be coached hard. And, you know, that's something he's come to us and say. I feel like I worked hard for this. And I also feel like I'm surrounded by a group of guys that, like, pushes me to work hard. So, I, I mean, huge credit goes to them. I tell you what, he has been great. All the best to him in Cathedral next round, of course, in the postseason. Time for a break. But more to come here tonight on the Zone Extra, including our play of the week, everybody, plus the latest installment of Ask the Commissioner with Paul Nidig of the IHSAA. That's on the way. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Welcome back to the Zone Extra. Anthony Calhoun here with you tonight. Now it's time for the Ask the Commissioner segment. Each week we take one of your questions to the Commissioner, Paul Nidig, and bring you his answer. So here we go this week. Here's this week's question. When a new school joins the IHSAA, what is the process they must go through before becoming eligible for postseason play? The process to become a member school of the IHSAA is um, you have to first, uh, you'd be established as a school and you have to establish an athletic program that promotes student athlete development within your school. And then once you have a male and female sport in the fall, a male and female sport in the winter and also in the spring, then you can apply to become a, a provisional member of the association. And then once you become a provisional member of the association, then you have to start following the bylaws of the Indiana High School Athletic Association, including the transfer process and, and grades and all the other things that go into being a student athlete. And after a four year period of time, we also uh, meet regular with them. One of the assistant commissioners do and make sure they have their, their school policies in place to, that focus on education based athletics. And then once they've met those requirements, uh, then it'll come before our board after four years and our board then can approve them into membership. And we have every year we have one or two schools that come on as new members. All right, always great to hear from the commissioner. Thanks again to the commissioner of the IHSAA for joining us. And here's how you can submit questions. Uh, send us a tweet using the hashtags, uh, the Zone Extra, and ask the commission, and your question could be used on a future show. Always love talking to the commissioner here on the Zone Extra. All right, now it's time to take a look at our play of the week. Each week we feature one of the top plays from the world of high school sports in central Indiana. Plus, we want you to get involved. We'll tell you how you can do that in a moment. But first, here is this week's top play. Tie game between Sullivan and North Harrison. With time running out, Sullivan's Randy Kelly launches it at the buzzer and banks it in for the win. Let's see that one more time. You see it right there. Wow. And they will face Beach Grove coming up on Saturday. Uh, we want to see your best plays every week as well. Here's all you got to do. All the information on the screen. Tweet us the video of a great play from a high school a sporting event you are attending using the hashtag The Zone Extra. Uh, tune in on Thursday night to see if your submission becomes our play 
of the week. And boy, we had some great plays so far this year on The Zone Extra. Hey, folks, thank you so much for watching The Zone Extra tonight. And hey, good luck to all those teams competing in the semi-state and boys basketball coming up on Saturday. Just one win away from heading to the Fieldhouse. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you back here next week, same time here on Wish TV.